Hey guys, before we get started, I want to quickly explain what the purpose of this build is. This is not a build to be used in expeditions or other group based content. This is strictly to be able to do things solo, as the rapidly disappearing population on New World has left solo as the only option for a lot of content, such as farming the less popular artifacts, upgradable gear, mount charms, a ton of things that you used to be able to find groups for and you just can't seem to anymore. I really do not like these god mode solo builds and I think they ruin the MMO experience but this build currently serves a very important purpose in New World and it really is an incredible build so with that preface out of the way, let's get into it. So this build takes advantage of two game mechanics, Fortify and Lifesteal. And Fortify was recently changed to give you a percentage increase of your armor rating instead of a flat damage mitigation. We're going to take advantage of this mechanical update and the passive effect on the Void Darkplate in combination with a disgusting amount of lifesteal to achieve a true god mode build that can solo any open world encounter in the game. And before we go any further, just a quick reminder, if you'd like to support the channel, you can always make a free account on Ashes of Creation with a referral link in the description down below. It'll help me out for when the game launches, and you'll be better prepared for what could be the biggest MMO of all times. For our main source of Fortify, it's going to be Fortifying Perforate. And you'll notice it's on an armor piece, and not on the weapon. But this is going to give us up to a 30% increase in armor rating, in combination with the Void Dark Plate's increase of 20%, in an already heavy armor setup, it really gets gross and that's before any of the life stealing or jewelry effects are applied. For the life stealing, we're obviously going to be running the blood drinker. No surprise there, minus 25% damage but 25% life steal and a second passive where all healing from life steal is increased by 5%. So let's go through the various sources of life steal we have. First up is Leeching Cyclone on the weapon, and do not laugh at this spear, I know it looks bad but you have to keep in mind this is for solo content in the open world, and this is actually a 3 out of 3 best in slot spear that I actually spent a few hours farming and a ton of gold upgrading at the gypsum kiln. You want lifesteal, you don't want trenchant recovery, you don't want mortal lifesteal or anything like that. This is the weapon to go for if you need an open world solo build. And for our secondary weapon we're going to be running leeching flurry on any rapier. Any rapier will do, just put leeching flurry on it. Uh, that's your backup. It'll give you invulnerability for half a second, so if you're getting really, really low, and Flurry has grit. So you can always swap to this and get a massive heal anytime that you need it. And you want Sturdy on your main weapon because you're going to have to take advantage of blocking. It's currently very good in New World, especially when they nerf heavy dodging in the future to 55 stamina cost. Right now that's not the case, but if you're watching this in the future, it probably is the case for you. And our final form of lifesteal is all of our rune glass gems. For the armor, I went with a full set of Rune Glass of Leeching Diamond for an extra 5% lifesteal, and I do believe that Diamond is the best gem for this. And for the weapons, we're going to be running two Rune Glasses of Leeching Jasper, which is the best gem to run for this, because we're not going to be hitting in power cap on either of these weapons. If you didn't know, the damage boost you get from Jasper gems actually count as in power, so if you're running something like a Great Sword, the Serenity, or if you're running Great Axe, Jasper's going to be a total waste for you as you'll hit in power cap, but with these weapons, for this specific build, we can take full advantage of this empower. And it is a big empower, 24% at max stacks, as well as giving us an extra 3% lifesteal on our attacks. Now for your gear, you're going to want to prioritize getting things like Grit Ward and Enchanted Ward, as those both work in PvE and you're going to be swinging a lot. You're going to have 300 con in this setup, so all of your light attacks are going to have grit, your flurry is going to have grit, and grit ward is going to be up a lot of the time. It's a flat 3% reduction on anything. So you can see for this setup, I have three pieces of grit ward. The Expedition Captain set is a great set to get for this, and the Void Dark Plate already comes with Enchanted Ward. I have Shirking Heals on this, but it's really not that serious. And then for the headpiece, this is the one piece of the setup I wish I could change. We need Fortifying Perforate, and I really wish I can get something instead of Thrust Conditioning, like Grit Ward or Enchanted Ward, and that would be pretty much best in slot for this setup. And now for the jewelry, it's very important that your amulet has Stamina Recovery, Refreshing Recovery, and Health. This is a best in slot amulet for this. Stamina recovery, when you get below 50% health, you gain 105 stamina, you can go right back to blocking or dodging, and refreshing recovery is so good for this. When you get below 50% health, all of your active cooldowns are reset. It's on a 90 second cooldown, but you shouldn't need it more than once every 90 seconds. You get your leeching cyclone back, 
you get your fortifying perforate back, and you get your leeching flurry back. And also we have sweep on the spear for added crowd control to try to mitigate damage. The amulet is such an important part of the setup. Do not skimp on this amulet. If you can't find this on the exchange, there's also a farmable amulet that you can upgrade at the gypsum kiln called the Corrupt Progenitor's Amulet, I believe. I'll put it on screen if I can find it. It comes with health and refreshing recovery. Just put stamina recovery on it and you're good to go. And then for the earrings, I would consider this best in slot. Uh, healthy Toast, Refreshing Toast, Nimble, you could swap Nimble for ref uh, Regenerating. Either of those two as a final perk will do. And then obviously we have the Blood Drinker Ring. I think Keen Awareness is the best for this. You could put Refreshing or... Yeah, keen, refreshing or keen awareness. Let's just say those are the only two real options. And as for the heart rune, I'm currently running the stalwart heart rune of stone form, which I do think is the best heart rune for this. You get a little bit of fortify and some additional heals if you need it. Although I haven't needed it yet. This setup is a true god mode setup. And as for the stats, like I said, 300 con is a hard requirement for this setup. This is going to grant your basic melee attacks grit, which is going to help you keep up your grit ward and keep up your damage mitigation, as well as it's going to let you get off your light attacks without being thrashed around so you can keep up your lifesteal. So just try to hit 300 con, you do not need 350. If the grit perk was at 200 con, we could just as easily take 200 con and kill anything in the game with this setup it is that good the rest of your points should go into dexterity try to hit 300 and 300 magnify can be a little bit weird so i had to put one extra point into strength but if as long as you have 300 and 300 you're good to go so let's hop into the open world and kill some difficult bosses now shall we i haven't tried this yet but let's go ahead and see if we can solo a corrupted portal inside of murk guard let me proc a corruption tincture potion Maybe a infused corruption coating as well. You may as well put the coatings and ward potions on. Well, actually, I don't have a corruption ward potion on me, do I? Okay, well, let's do this without a corrupted ward potion. Shouldn't be that hard. Okay, the two mages are dead, and I haven't even used a potion yet. Bring it on. You could solo farm the Abyss with this if you had the patience. Although I'm sure you could probably find a group for that. This is just to show you how stupid this is. Like, I, I literally don't fear for my life at all in Merc Guard, soloing a Corrupted Portal. It's so stupid. Oh, no, no, no. Get out of here, retired soldier. <laughs> Come on, man. That's going to be very hard to solo Corrupted Portal. People actually do them on my server. But you have to take my word for it. I could definitely do it while watching a movie on the side. Go. Go. <laughs> the one time I want to do solo content, there's a little group running through. Alright, let me hang behind, wait for Archmagister Vokus to spawn, and we'll solo it this time. We'll go ahead, grab aggro on him, and a few of these mages. I'm honestly not worried at all. Like I keep saying, it's it's literally god mode. Alright, let's go. Uh, the, the hard part's getting to him through all this freaking noise and knockback. Alright, okay, woo! Alright, go for the flurry. That has grit. Alright, we're good, we're good. We just have to left click. Once we start left clicking, we're good. Because then we have grit and we can't get pushed back.
Okay, well I would say that's proof of concept enough. A little bit of an annoying fight because of all these freaking meatballs being flung at me. But not too scary at all. No potions used. No heart rune used. Not even any corruption tinctures used. So like the ones that reduce damage. What are they called? Not coatings. Oh, the ward potions. No corruption ward potions used either. Literally just lifesteal and fortify. Can solo anything in this game right now. And to get the spear showcased in this video, which drops from Savanny Pride Lioness in Elijah and Wilds, there's a massive shortcut you can take to get to the boss, which I'll show you now. Normally, you would have to come to the Shrine of the Lion, go southwest, and run through this whole cave, which is filled with chameleons and gorillas, and it's just a really annoying experience. Although, you can ride through it on your mount if you want, which is not too bad, but there's a much faster method. Just enter the compound, take a slight left turn, and hold block, and you can literally scale right up this wall. Uh, let's see, I did it last kill, because I just got here. I've not yet gotten the spear, but let me see. I'm pretty sure I got up here. There we go, and then once you make it over that ledge, just go left. And the boss should spawn right here. Now, instead of shooting it to aggro it, because you will pull that uh, silver back, just slowly walk up. Okay, he turned his back. Creep forward until the lion aggroes you. Yeah, that's the best way to solo farm this, because I guarantee you're not going to find anyone here. Not too hard of a solo boss to farm, though. And when you do finally obtain the Havoc Spear, you want to take it straight to the Gypsum Kiln and put Life Stealing on it. Just basic, plain old Life Stealing. No Mortal Life Steal, no Trench and Recovery, or any of those other Life Stealing perks. Basic Life Stealing is going to be the optimal perk for this setup. Very expensive craft, but then again a very niche weapon that is pretty much best in slot for this use case. I wouldn't change a thing about this weapon. Well, except for the stats. I just don't like split stats, but the weapon itself is perfect.